Welcome, Sebastian. Welcome, dear listener, to another e debate on 2debate.eu, your podcast of debates. You complain in every single debate that we don't talk about Trump. At least today you will have a chance to talk about Trump, Sebastian. I actually don't even have him in my little... Oh, no, actually, you're, you're right. You're yes. right. I do have him. Yep. But it did not have to be about Trump. No, it's not a debate about at, Trump. No, it's it, it's always touches upon him, but like, you know, not physically. Like that's <laughs> got a spat on my screen because I was shocked with what I said. Um, let me find a tissue. Yeah, so for much the screen. So much passion. All right. Yeah, I spat on you on the screen. Uh, uh, yeah, so much passion. Yeah. No, I I thought you you say you were, we're back in Trump land. We could have said we're back in China or back in. In the UK, because the UK in 17 days, 16 days are supposed to exit the EU without a deal, maybe. Yeah, but that's and not a trade they, war. No, but they don't have any trade agreements in yes. place so they're in a, on, the, on the other nations, which may result in trade conflicts. And if a, for those who have not been living under a rock, you may have seen that there are some issues between China and the US in terms of many things, but among other things, trade, because China exports a lot of stuff to the US. In fact, I think the biggest trade deficit ever was recorded last month in the US or last quarter. I can't remember which uh, uh, time frame they were looking at. So yep. the imports into the US from China far exceeded by $600 billion, if I'm not mistaken, for a quarter, the exports from the US yeah, to China. Yeah, which, which goes to show that the Americans certainly like to buy things from China. And all of this bantering that we just exchanged all touched on our motion today, which is trade wars are more harmful than military wars. The context for this also, and I, I found a quote from a, it turned out it was a French economist from the 19th century, never heard of him, called Frédéric Bastia. How come does that, that you always find French philosophers, French scientists, mean? French politicians, French... <laughs> well, because it was all invented in France. Philosophy, science, mm -hmm. and yep. politics. Okay, and the Grand Nation. All right, une grande nation, tout à fait. Um, so so that, that quote, which I'll tell you in, in English, just turned out uh, when I was preparing for this debate. And it will say the context. When goods do not cross frontiers, armies will. And I think it says the context that, indeed, there, a, a trade war could lead, and I'll touch upon that, to a uh, to military war. But the question we're debating today is it, and it's whether one is more harmful than the other. Yeah. I'll be against that motion. That's a flip of the coin. I will defend that military wars are still more harmful than trade wars, and you'll defend the other side. Yes, and that was the most chaotic introduction we had in a long, long time, I feel. Really? Yeah, really? yeah. I didn't even yeah. say hi. I forced you to jump into <laughs> definition right it's away. It's the most chaotic <laughs> because you didn't say anything for once. That's why. <laughs> ah, ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just like in the previous debate, you called me ignorant. No, I actually self-declared myself ignorant. You called, you called my ignorance and you exposed it to the world so i'm, your, I'm, not, bon, to, I'm not bon jovi t-shirt you, you realize your own ignorance but i'm to blame what's that right <laughs> you can see i've got a lot of experience blaming others for my own <laughs> for my own ignorance all right it's my two minutes let's do this okay let's do this sebastian goes first and argues against the motion We're talking about direct harm to human life when we talk about armed conflicts in comparison to trade wars, which have direct economic consequences and very indirect results on physical integrity. It's easy to understand why military conflicts are way more damaging than trade wars. In fact, I would even say that military wars are, military wars are getting more sophisticated and dangerous If you take into account nuclear weapons, which have not been used yet in conflicts, but could be biological weapons, potentially manipulation of sensors that we would have embedded into our bodies, it's, it's insane. It's crazy to imagine the military, military, rule, the military war of tomorrow. In contrast, I would argue that trade wars are getting easier to circumvent at the individual level, maybe not at the country level, but at the individual level, you're not affected as much by it as a military war. They may be damaging, as I said, at, at country levels, but you can always, in theory, as an individual, switch to another job area. It's not as easy as one would like because it's not easy to train yourself to some other area. But in theory, you could even go to the extent of going back to 
growing your own farm to eat and building your own shelter, nothing really prevents you from living. Uh, whereas we're talking about life or death when it comes to armed conflict. In fact, we had a debate recently on capitalism and its effect on climate. And during that debate, I was calling for localizing production. And we can take that to the extreme, as I said, and saying, hey, you can just cultivate your own garden and your own farm, as a French philosopher Voltaire would say, in fact. Trade wars can lead and do cause world wars. We've seen this in the 20th century. Maybe you'll talk about this. That's how dangerous the trade wars are. Still, it's just leading to it. And when they lead to something that implies that the evolution is nasty and indeed deadly, but it gets, gets from bad to worse. And no, when Trump is saying trade wars are good and easy to win, I disagree with this also. Trade wars are a misnomer. They should be called trade deals, negotiations, what you want to call them. But they're not real wars. They can trigger these real wars, but as a trigger, they're dangerous. But the real harm comes afterwards. So I contend that military wars remain more harmful than trade wars by far. Now, it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his argument. So for this argument, what do we call a trade war? My definition is simplistic, so bear with me. I'm not an economist, nor do I have a background in foreign policy. But for me, a trade war refers to the use of economic influence with the goal to damage or severely threaten the economy of a nation state. So in that sense, embargoes are trade wars, tariffs are trade wars, currency wars are trade wars. And I do think you play the effect down quite a bit. Yes, you in Switzerland, you could start farming if it comes down to it. If you're somewhere in, in, in Africa, you cannot if you're in Iraq, you cannot. And just to pick that example, it leads to very real death. There have been estimations around that said the embargoes of the US against the Iraqi people led to the death of up to several hundreds of thousands of children that died for a lack of medicine, for, for um, from a lack of nutrition. And that is a very real death toll. Go and ask the North Korean people if they feel that happy about the trade wars that are enforced on them. I will go into Trump's stupid trade wars in my next segment in more depth. In general, he's not an economist either, and he's simplifying the effect on the world economy to a great deal. For him, a trade deficit is the equivalent of not having a fair bargain. That's not how world economy works. If you have money floating around and somebody making more money, that's actually more money for everybody. That is called growing the cake. Trade wars shrink the cake and whenever cakes shrink then those that are at the bottom of the of the salary pyramid those are the ones suffering and those are the ones literally dying from malnutrition and having no medicine left so it is killing people and it's actually killing more people than the very obvious military conflicts that usually lead to a very fast counter reaction because we don't want to see that kind of pictures <laughs> Now it's Sebastian's turn. Let's hear his rebuttal. You do raise good points uh, for, for when you cite the example of the embargo. However, I would contend that if you look at the global scale of things, embargoes are a, a drop in the ocean. They're not a drop in the ocean when it comes to harm. I agree with you. They can lead to terrible consequences, but it's not the majority of the trade deals, negotiation, conflicts we see between 220 countries on the planet. But even in that case, if you look at the indirect consequence on famine, on diseases, um, I would still argue that, again, if you look at the past century, it's a small, uh, um, again, it's difficult to measure harm and, and loss of life. But if you count by numbers of people dying and being injured, it's a small toll to pay overall compared to the world wars that we've had and all the civil wars that we've had over the past century, the two world wars and all the armed conflicts around the African continent, which you cited, but also across the planet, uh, the Vietnam War, etc. It's I mean, hundreds of millions of people. But I didn't do the actual tally, so I would not be able to know. Here's the thing. It's generally accepted that armed conflicts today are less harmful than they used to be. If you compare military wars today to, let's say, the world wars, they usually incur a, a, a lower number of deaths. But I, as I said in my introduction, I worry that we're going to soon see the reverse of that trend because of all these biological weapons, because of whatever, AI-enhanced robot soldiers, whatever it is, 
I worry that we're actually going to see a reversal of that trend and we're going to see an increase in the number of civilians and soldiers being killed as a result of the modern wars of tomorrow. Let me add a few more things, three things. First of all, armed conflicts, I think, equate directly with the loss of human life. It still was the case yesterday. It still is the case today. It will be the case tomorrow. Trade wars, in my opinion, mean firstly and foremost the loss of material things. Initially, they may have indirect consequences. And to the difference of the past, though, when trade wars would lead to armed wars, as I quoted this French economist before we started the debate, most trade conflicts today, since World War II, by the way, like let's, say, let's look at the US and their conflict in terms of trade with other nations. Most of these conflicts have been with friendly countries, not with North Korea or Iran. The majority of the conflicts are with friendly countries. Has there been any military war as a result? No. Because it's European countries with disputes over uh, consumer goods, it's Canada with timber, Japan and uh, automobile imports. There's no war which has been going on since 1945 against, and even, even before that, against most of these European countries. So the world has changed, right? The trade war does not lead to actually more damage afterwards necessarily as it used to. And also, it's also because trade is globalized. So when you said, um, the trade war is defined by the use of economic power to threaten another nation, actually, to the difference of what you're saying and what happened, what could have been possible in the past, today trade is global. And it ends up being harmful if you stop playing the devil to all parties involved. Whereas military conflict today has also changed with one side being able to bear almost no loss thanks to weapons that allow distant warfare, such as military drones. So I think we see a very stark contrast where trade war is actually impacting everyone and nobody wants to engage in that. And in, in essence, is not about the loss of human life and military wars, which are getting more dangerous and deadly. And now on to Dirk. You hate when I say that, but I have to say it. You made a bit of my argument for me. I will start with this. Trade wars are worse than military wars because they strike broader. You just said it. In modern times, it's actually not only the two nations involved, especially not in the big trade wars. Trump's stupid trade war he starts with China actually impacts the whole world because everybody has to pick sides because the tariffs are not only for Chinese goods. They actually also, the Americans also threaten European partners and everybody else on the world that continues trading with uh, partners they don't like. So things are by extension often uh, also impacting other nations. So they are much more broader. Then the second thing, military wars. Yes, I agree. Maybe future wars may be more devastating. Maybe the opposite will happen. Maybe in future wars, only robots will fight. No one knows. But the fact of the matter is we civilized ourselves to the point that actually in real combat, the, the civilized world tries to attack soldiers and military infrastructure. Yes, there are still plenty of civilians uh, dead uh, afterwards, but usually we try to avoid carpet bombing cities and things like that. In a trade war, there is no difference between the poor child and the soldier. In fact, the poor child is the first one to die of starvation because they uh, that's where the, the resources lack the most. So a, a trade war is attacking people that are innocent and are powerless. And that alone makes a trade war more harmful than a military war. And then again, I think we, we fall into the trap of uh, miscalculating the loss of life because it's more hidden in a trade war scenario. Now, let's take Trump's stupid trade war that I referred to a few times, just to put it in numbers that are totally crazy abstract. They don't mean anything to me anyway, even if I make the math, but let's do it anyway. Trump threatens to put tariffs on about 500 billion US dollars worth of goods from China. If he does that, um, and he's doing uh, one, uh, um, 25 percent tariffs at the moment, that amounts to 125 billion US dollars he wants to put tariffs on give or take a little bit. That's a number that's floating around. Um, and that's matched by China. China, of course, will do the same thing in return. So both countries put tariffs on the uh, um, other country. Of course, these tariffs impact their production, impact their customers, impact their, 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 their employees. So they try to compensate for that. And that's already happening by putting up subsidies. So Trump is subsidizing farmers, for instance, for uh, increased soybean, price, uh, soybean prices. And China is doing the same thing. So they both kind of doubling the amount of money they, they battle over. That 
in essence, in the end, means that you're taking away about, well, give or take 310 billion US dollars from the global market. Now, these US dollars, they pay your salary, they pay my salary, they pay the salary of the plumber around the corner in, in Germany as much as in Italy as in everywhere, because we are in a global economy. So they are really damaging everybody because this piece of the cake is not available anymore because two powerful states decide to do a trade war. I do think this is making uh, doing more harm than a military war because if they meet somewhere on the ocean and exchange a battle fire or if they have some, some placeholder war somewhere in the Middle East between soldiers, mind you, that's not impacting just as much as uh, maybe not having the money anymore to buy uh, medicine. <laughs> Final statements. Sebastian goes first. In conclusion, I will say three things. Number one, if you look at the some sort of priority of where the harm is, I would say number one, loss of human life. Number two, in priority order, is loss of material goods. So that's why I think there is a, almost a philosophical aspect to the debate we're, we're having and that and military war and armed conflicts have this direct toll on human life. Secondly, I would contend that there are more risks especially when you look at the recent trend where Trump and Putin have disengaged from the nuclear arms control treaty, which means we're back to this kind of cold war getting warmer with new weapons, biological warfare and AI and whatever is going to happen tomorrow. So there's potentially the risk of very deadly wars uh, coming up. I don't wish for that, but I worry about this. And the third aspect is this prisoner's dilemma when it comes to trade wars, where everyone has to lose when playing this devil, the, the evil game, uh, so everyone negotiates, and in the end, we'll see more and more stability when it comes to trade, even though there are these protectionist attitudes from some some countries. But in the end, it will it will work out. It will play out. So overall, I still contend that military wars are more harmful than trade wars. Dirk. I, too, have three things. First off... Some scholars say the First World War was initially started by a number of trade wars. And as you said, future wars may potentially be more deadly. So why do we play with fire by allowing trade wars to happen as they often are the starting point? Second thing I want to say, just assuming we don't talk about future wars, let's talk about the conventional wars that we have right now. Conventional wars sometimes last only days and they usually target very specific groups of people. Trade wars last sometimes for years on end and have impact that sometimes ranges into decades and cause uh, economic crises of global proportions. In the end, these crises kill people just as much as real weapons would, but not as controlled and not as targeted as real weapons would. So trade wars are more harmful than military wars for these reasons. <laughs> So what do you really think? Did you have an opinion on that? I do think it was very artful from you to separate the, the it leads to war from uh, from the actual point of trade wars because I think the, mo the da most dangerous piece of trade wars is that they very often lead to wars and sometimes not even between the parties that have the trade conflict. So I do think trade wars are extremely dangerous, especially in our globalized world. And what I said earlier also is something I believe. I do believe trade wars kill people and by the hundreds of thousands, literally. And we just no, don't see it. Millions. It's a statistic, right? So we don't see no, that. No, I agree. I, th I would think if it's, it's the millions. Yeah. And, and I, I would not disagree with that. And I think just, uh, I do think they're a dangerous trigger. In fact, if anything, a military war is not always, but often a question of getting your hand over resources, petrol, land, water, minerals, whatever it is. In the end, it's, you know, if you look at the underlying reasons, it's, hey, this is my property, this is my land, or I need more resources to grow. Think of China. But even ethnic cleansing, you know, is, you know, in, uh, underlying all this is maybe the, the aspect of, you know, I want to build a stronger nation, and for this, I need resources. Yes. So, anyway, um, interesting developments with what's happening right now in the world, because it's all tightly connected. Audience, I agree. Right? Like the the debate of. we had earlier about the pre-internet not being just as free anymore. All these things kind of 
come to the same point into the same direction nations trying to be more controlling over their resources and ability to act in the world nations fighting over uh, who dominates money and trade uh, technology is a huge piece of that unfortunately military technology a lot dominance in regions like the south china sea and such so a lot of this so the trade wars we see Thankfully, it's trade wars and not real wars. So if I have to choose between the two, I'm, I'm still not sure which is better. But as you say, things like the called off uh, weapons control treaties and such are scary, to say the least. Even Trump's space force we make so much fun of is scary because imagine um, nuclear bombs being dropped from, from space, I, which yeah. is essentially what this is about. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Yeah, I, I'm not happy about these developments. And trade wars are often the start and the trigger. May you live in interesting times is a Chinese curse for a reason, right? And with it, thank you for debating today. And for our dear listeners, please tune in to our next debate next week. We'll be there. Thank you for listening. And thank you, Sebastian, for debating. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.